Jerusalem Online, I'm Mike Greenspan. And a very warm welcome to our newest viewers now watching us on the Shalom TV channel on Mnet all over South Africa. We hope you enjoy and we look forward to hearing from you. Another birthday has come and gone. Israel is now 45 years old. And here's a look at some of the excitement of this Independence Day. In Tel Aviv, tens of thousands of Israelis took to the beaches. What lured them there was a thrilling display of aerial and seaborne prowess by the Israel Defense Forces. And what a show it was. But the mood here was distinctly unwarlike this week, with Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin hinting at far-reaching Israeli gestures in the next round of Middle East peace talks, an attempt to accelerate progress toward Palestinian autonomy in the West Bank and Gaza Strip. Palestinian attacks on Israeli soldiers and civilians have been way down since Jerusalem clamped a closure on the territories. Meanwhile, beefed-up Israeli forces in the territories have stepped up action against alleged Palestinian terrorists. On this week's look at the people and the stories behind the news, we'll venture into one of Israel's natural wonderlands as we rollick and roll down the River Jordan. We'll also meet some men and women with a mission, representatives of the Jewish community of Detroit. But first, it's time to celebrate Lag Omer, a minor Jewish holiday that Israelis celebrate in a major way. Lag Omer marks a break in a period of ritual mourning that falls between Passover and Shavuot. Secular Israelis celebrate with picnics and bonfires. Religious Jews make pilgrimage to the grave of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai on Mount Meron in the Galilee. So what kind of a country is Israel? A Jewish country, you say. In fact, it's called the Jewish state, though some one million of its five million citizens aren't Jewish at all. Be that as it may, what it means to be a Jewish state isn't always clear. In fact, between observant and non-observant Jews, it's a matter of ongoing disagreement and sometimes tension. Israel also has something Jews in much of the rest of the world don't have, a chief rabbi. Two, in fact, one Sfaradi and one Ashkenazi. Recently elected Ashkenazi chief rabbi of Israel, Yisrael Meir Lau, is my guest. Welcome. Thank you. Rabbi Lau will define that title, chief rabbi, in just a minute. But first, let's talk about that term Jewish state. Considering the fact that Israel is pretty well split between observant and non-observant Jews, just how Jewish a country is it? It is a Jewish country because fundamentally the Jewish behavior is the fundament of the state. Take uh, circumcision. 99% of the Israeli, of the Jewish uh, population in Israel, they will make circumcision to the children in the eighth day. Take the bar mitzvah. 95% of the Jewish population they are conducting some kind of a ceremony of bar mitzvah and laying tefillin, going to a synagogue. Uh, and as you know, to take a city like Tel Aviv, which is not a very religious one, is more secular, among 600 synagogues in the city, 600 synagogues, there are three who are not orthodox. So the Jewish atmosphere does pervade Israeli take life. Take the Shabbat, take the Passover, take Yom Kippur take marriages and divorces only according to the Jewish halacha. This means a Jewish state. I'll get back to questions about some of the points you just raised in just a minute, but first about your title. You are the chief rabbi, one of two chief rabbis of an entire country, not a congregation. Now, you're also elected by a group of religious leaders and public figures, including politicians, which raises some questions about the separation of religion and state. What exactly is the nature of your job? What do you do? I have to be in the pyramid, in the climax of the spiritual leadership, because every congregation has its rabbi, every city in Israel has its rabbanim, Sfaradi or Ashkenazi or both, and now there are some things which are national and not local, like education, like uh, how to absorb Ethiopian Jewry, how to behave to conversions, how to absorb so-called Soviet Jewry, questions of kashrut and other problems which are national and not local. For these problems, you need a chief rabbinate for the whole country. The chief rabbinate, originally at least, was conceived as an authority that would help to mediate between tradition and the demands of a modern state. Now, some modern Israelis resent one of the things you mentioned before, that all marriages, all divorces in this country are are, are held according to Orthodox Jewish law. Uh, they ask, why no civil marriage? Why no civil divorce? Uh, why not allow those ceremonies for those who prefer them? 
If you start, if you start, you don't know what the end will be. We look at the state of Israel according to the independence scroll 45 years ago, as you have mentioned, that there is written not a state for Jews, but a Jewish state. This is like Noah's Ark. To survive assimilation, you need some laws, and the law of divorce or marriages, according to the Allaha, this can prevent, and only this is the way to prevent intermarriages, which lead people to assimilation. Rabbi Lau will take a short break, and we'll continue talking with Chief Rabbi Yisrael Meir Lau when Jerusalem Online continues. You're watching Jerusalem Online, and my guest is Israel's Chief Ashkenazi Rabbi Yisrael Meir Lau. Many of our Jewish viewers abroad don't feel like celebrating when they consider Jewish religious life in Israel, and one of the reasons is this. Many of them are conservative and reformed Jews. Their movements are not recognized by the religious establishment in this country. They ask, isn't there room for more religious pluralism? We are in a very limit, a shortage of time, so I cannot explain the whole issue of the difference between orthodoxy and non-orthodoxy movements in Judaism. I meet colleagues of the reform or conservative movements in the United States of America and even here. There is a main difference between diaspora and Israel in regarding to these movements. There, in diaspora, very many of us, brothers and sisters of Jews, because there is no question about who is a Jew, even if you are not Orthodox, you are Jewish according to Allah. Maybe the question is who is a rabbi, but not who is a Jew. They find a need for possession, for belonging, and to participate a congregation, conservative or reform or reconstructions, with a swimming pool, with a bingo club, with a dancing hall, with a ballroom. This is for them a way to identify themselves Jewish. Here in Israel is different. To identify yourself as a Jew, you don't need the synagogue. You don't go to a congregation in the school, in the street, in the army, in the university, even in the discotheque. You are among Israelis, you are among Jews. If you go to the shul, to the synagogue, you go because you want the tradition. Tradition for most of the Israelis, especially the Oriental tribes who come from Asia and Africa, is the old traditional shul with the old tradition of Sabbat, of Hagim. They do not accept the compromise between Judaism and secular. But for those Jews who do want something different, why not let them have it when and officially mess, sanction it? Yeah, yeah, when the Mess Aliyah will come, not like Tel Aviv, as I have mentioned, among 600 shuls are only three who are not very full. If there will be a need, a real need, I am sure that time will do it. Unless Messiah will come and open the eyes to show that Mount Sinai affair is still very, very up to date. Thanks for coming here and joining us today, Rabbi Israel Meir Lau. Thank you. We're going to take you rocking and rolling on the river. And I do mean the river, the river that all Israelis love. And believe me, they have very few options right after this. Jerusalem Online Headlines, I'm Miriam Hirschlag. Another sign of warming ties between Israel and Egypt, the two countries have signed an agreement to cooperate on environmental matters. These include fighting the spread of desert, protecting water resources, and recycling waste for agricultural use. At the signing in Cairo, Israel's Environment Minister Yossi Sarid said he hoped the Israeli-Egyptian cooperation would highlight the need for a region-wide effort to protect natural resources. Gambling casinos in Israel, yes or no, it's a point of sharp contention these days between developers who want to draw visitors to out-of-the-way spots and locals who fear casinos will bring crime to their neighborhoods. To help make the decision, a researcher has been sent to observe gambling operations throughout the world and come up with a model that maximizes economic benefits and minimizes harmful effects. 
The Igbo tribe of eastern Nigeria descends from Ephraim, one of the ten biblical Jewish tribes. The Igbo circumcise their sons when they're eight days old and celebrate the Jewish New Year. This is the argument put forward by Chima Edwards Onyolo, an Igbo tribesman now living in Israel, who has demanded he be recognized as a Jew under Israel's law of return. Onyolo, an engineer, moved to Israel and married a Tel Aviv woman. He's fighting his case in Israel's Supreme Court. After years of delay by legislators, Israel's second TV channel is finally going into commercial operation with a unique time-sharing formula. Three separate production companies will broadcast on the channel. Each company gets two days a week for programming, and they take turns on Saturdays. And finally, after 10 years of work, Israeli scientist Rafi Frankel has achieved his goal, a seedless tomato. While tomato seeds may not be keeping you awake at night, bear these advantages in mind. Longer shelf life, no need for chemicals for growing, and if you happen to manufacture ketchup, no more straining out the seeds. I'm Miriam Hirschlag for Jerusalem Online. We're back. Every week here on Jerusalem Online, we take an in-depth look at current Israeli events, the issues that affect our lives and make headlines around the world. But a quick study of our POB, Your Responses, reveals an unflagging interest in those aspects of Israel that never make the news. They just make people feel good. The Jordan River has been doing that since at least the days of the Bible. It's a tiny stream that packs a tremendous wallop. Jerusalem Online's Eitan Wetzler caught it on video as he went rolling on the river. Enjoy. small river and, and sometimes people say how can you get so excited about uh, such a small river it is a river uh, which uh, plays a, a big role in the history of the Bible Jesus has been here it is holy water in the Galil and around the Jordan all along the valley here, as you can see, it's a beautiful place. There's lots of nature tricks around the area. There's a couple of parks where you can go and visit. There's beautiful wildlife. You have sun, you have water. There's not much more you could ask for. excitement. People say, are you going to be afraid? You don't have time to be afraid. You're, you're involved very much in what you're doing. You're very much together with the nature because you're right down on top of the water there. You have the water underneath you. We have the greenery alongside of you there. Uh, it's wonderful. It's a good sport. The speed and just, I don't know, freedom kind of just go fast down the river. You have to say it. It's very difficult to explain. It's great. All ages come here, everybody. We have from 16 up to 60. We've had people from even an 80-year-old grandmother once that they were, were brought here for a birthday present, and she didn't believe that she would get into the boat, and she got into the boat and left the boat with a smile. We take them to places that they wouldn't get to otherwise. We take them to places in the jeep that if they had to walk by foot would take them a day or longer. Things change very quickly. You can come from one day to the next and you see different flowers 
uh, blossoming and you see different flowers uh, dying. So every day uh, is something new. which is an aeroplane, actually, without an engine. Very nice to take uh, young people. That, that is, for, for them, the first flight. That's really something uh, very special. Stay in the air with the birds, quietly. Now, we'll see how it feels at the end. Feels pretty good, although the horse's name is Buck. I'm a little <laughs> suspicious. <laughs> when you're on a bus or in a car and you're going fast by everything, you don't really have the opportunity to appreciate the beauty of the surroundings. I came here to stay for one month in silence. ridden in the Sierra and uh, when you're atop mountains nine ten thousand feet you get a great feeling but here it's even it's even better we were acquaintances not really friends but I think on this trip we've become friends it's taken me about 18 years to come back but I think I'll be back a lot sooner than that again Let the good times roll, the River Jordan. And what about the Golan Heights? Well, they're the subject of a letter that showed up in this week's P.O.B. Dennis Furster of Bayside, New York, saw our recent interview with General Orior, and he wrote, General Orr is either a fool or a thief. If he believes Israel should give away some land on the Golan Heights for peace, then he is a fool paying extortion to a bullying neighbor. What sovereign nation gives away its rightful territory? If or believes Israel should give back some land for peace, then he is a thief. If the Golan doesn't rightfully belong to the Jewish nation, then an honest person would give it all back. What chutzpah? It may be chutzpah, Dennis, but land and peace, land for peace, is the formula that Israel and its Arab neighbors have agreed upon in the current peace talks. The goal is compromise. Well, people, your input is always welcome here, so send your comments, questions, and suggestions to us at this address, Jerusalem Online, P.O.B. 33003, Jerusalem, Israel. That's Jerusalem Online, P.O.B. 33003 in Jerusalem. Or fax us at country code 972-2381658. That's 972-2381658. Don't forget to mention when and on what station you watch Jerusalem Online, which continues right after this. Jerusalem Online continues. Throughout the year, Israel welcomes Jewish delegations from around the world. But it's not every day that 1,300 people show up in one group. That's the size of the Michigan Miracle Mission, now visiting here. Joining me now are mission co-chairperson Larry Jakir and bus captain Kathy Fink. Welcome. Thank you. Kathy, you're here just in time to celebrate Independence Day with the Israelis and to wonder along with the rest of the country what happens next in the peace process. How does it feel to be here? This is an exciting time of the year for us to be here. Not only has our community anticipated this trip for a year and planned for it, but the culmination of it has just been unbelievable. How did you celebrate Independence Day? We celebrated Independence Day in our sister city, Yavna. 
and uh, basically spent time in the homes of the residents. We got a, a personal relationship established with the family. We got to spend time um, conversing what the issues that face them, what the concerns that face us, and what we share in common. Larry, it is not every day that a mission this big comes to Israel. Normally the numbers run no higher than about 400. How did you get so many people to come, and what are you hoping to accomplish with them here in Israel? Well, we, we got a lot of people to come because we had not done a big mission in Detroit for some time. Uh, we planned it early. Uh, we got the word out very early, and uh, because of the people, I think, a little bit who were involved, uh, and the excitement about a trip to Israel, from word of mouth, people just decided they had to be on this experience. What, what do you what, want to happen to them here? I was, I was going to say that I think what we want to happen has happened, and that is that I think virtually to a man and a woman who are participants, they will go home with a new sense of their own Jewish identity and a sense of how they fit here with the land and the people of Israel. So it's been an incredible experience and I believe very successful. Of course, we're also talking about a desire for continuity, a continuity of American Jewish involvement in things Israeli and in addition in a Jewish life in the United States. What form does that take, Kathy? The form of continuity, um, I believe, starts with the principles that bind us together as Jewish people. I heard from a number of people on my bus and also friends who said they felt like they were coming home. So I think we start at the, um, the point we start at is the fundamental beliefs we share and the ideals, and then we go from there. And people have to, in the United States have to understand the role that Israel plays in our Jewish lives. Larry, in the past, the Detroit metropolitan area has been very involved in project renewal. Things are changing here. There's mass aliyah and a need to absorb that aliyah. What form will the future participation and involvement take? In project renewal? In general in Israel. Well, first in project renewal, there's no question that that relationship will continue because it's very special, as Kathy indicated. It's, it's a person-to-person, community-to-community, very much hands-on kind of a relationship. There's a tremendous warm feeling that you immediately feel when we come to Yavna. It's like uh, coming home to your family. So I have no uh, doubt that that will continue. And, and in general as well, I think that not only will it continue, but it will move to a newer level because we have 1,300 people who are now going to go back and become spokesmen for the state of Israel and, and get involved in our community where they haven't been involved. So I don't think there's any question that it, it will grow and grow. Larry Jakir. And Kathy Fink from the Mirican, uh, Michigan, what a mouthful that is, the <laughs> Michigan Miracle Mission. Thanks for coming here today. Thank you. Thank you. That wraps up this week's look at the people and the stories behind the news. So join me again next week for Jerusalem Online. I'm Mike Greenspan. Shalom. He creates the fruit of the vine. L'chaim. 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 L'chaim.